All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, calling together the planning board meeting for March 6, 2004. First, a quick uh, opening statement. This meeting is being recorded and allows for real time public participation. Comments can be addressed to the planning board utilize, utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application allows users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the answer and question function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For, the user, for those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's webpage. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. All right, starting with uh, roll call, James Sweeney. Here. Alanda Spinola. Here. Marty Kroll. Here. Larry Hassan. Here. And Tony Gonzalez, present. All right, uh, so tonight's agenda, we have um, site plan review for property 1315 Main Street. And then secondly, an annual reorganization of the planning board. Um, first, can I get a... Most to approve February minutes. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Second. All right, roll call. James Sweeney. Yes. Rhonda Spinola. Yes. Marty Kroll. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. All right. Next Madam, up. Madam, Madam Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, before we move on to 1315, uh, you need to take a vote as to whether or not to uh, postpone this public hearing or to proceed with this public hearing. And uh, then if, if there's an affirmative vote, then you can open the hearing and, and go. All right, thank you for that. Um, first, I believe Evan has some lot releases for Amelia State Estates. Oops. Yes, we do. Uh, they are looking to release six lots out of the held eight. Uh, they've done the work that they need to do to get to that stage. Uh, DPW said it's good. We'll be holding back two lots uh, until they complete the work. No, no issues. All right. Do we have to do them individually or just by numbers? Um, or... um, I'll read the numbers off and then you can just do one of them. So it's going to be lot nine, 10, 12, 13, 16, and 17 to be released. All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right, roll call. James? Yes. Orlando? Yes. Marty? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, so what Rob is referencing the applicant for Teen Challenge is not here tonight, but we can um, vote to go ahead and review the application and vote on this. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ahead, uh, what, what's motion this for the motion? hearing. To hear, yeah, it just to hear it. This is just- Not continue, yes. Thank just you. First, a motion uh, uh, to and vote to hear it and then after that, we'll vote to pass or deny. Uh, okay, so um, Larry, do you, you still want to make that motion? So, yes, motion to approve, to hear. Second that. All right, roll call, James? Yes. Yolando? Yes. Marty? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yes, all right, Tony, yes, thank you. So, <clears throat> um, Basically, just a recap of this project that's been continued a hundred times. Um, 1315 Main Street, it's a proposal to construct a new dwelling and build an additional addition onto an existing garage. Um, it's been determined that the stormwater issues between the applicant and the neighbor uh, are not within our um, purview or our decision. So we don't have to worry about the water the stormwater any longer. That's between the law department and I guess the city staff. Um, what we're here to vote on uh, is the easement issues um, and have they been addressed according to what the city staff had requested. Um, I see <clears throat> the department has suggested 
that this be contingent, if this is passed, is contingent on the city staff approving and recording their changes to the easement at 30 Clifton Ave. Any questions from yep. the planning Madam group members? Yeah, Larry, it's Larry. So I'm, I'm reading some of the notes that the staff has put together for us. Do we know, has that, have they revised that easement and is it in the staff for review? Has it been reviewed or do we know that yet? It's my understanding it's, it's been revised and submitted to the, I guess the law department and is it the law department and the engineer, Evan? Uh, it's just the law department. Just the law department. So but they have not approved it yet is I guess the answer I'm looking for. We don't have that cleared. No, it's just Correct. been submitted, so okay. that's why um, it would be. It's it's suggested that there's a condition that it be approved and recorded okay. before um, as a as a condition, basically. All right, that's all. The question. That's the only question I had. I mean, mm -hmm. thank you. Other questions? Is this open for public comment, Rob? Yes, as a public hearing, uh, we now have an opportunity for people to speak in favor or against the project. And so if anyone would like to speak, um, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. Um, hover over that and we will um, allow you to um, address the board. And I have uh, Veronica Stevens, who I am going to uh, allow to talk. Hang on just a second. Veronica, are you there? I hope so. There you are. Everyone can hear me then. Yes. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of at a loss because I don't, I'd like to know exactly what I can and cannot speak about. For the record, I don't want to cross lines. Can I speak about anything or do I have to avoid certain topics? No, you're free to speak about it. anything regarding the teen challenge and your uh, situation with them. I am, okay. Uh, first, in regards to what is being proposed, I'm concerned that the easement being elevated and the wall being able to remain leaves my property in jeopardy. What this I haven't been able to obtain is any information regarding how the enforcement order is going to be enacted. I mean, it's it's enforcement. He's got an enforcement. They've issued it, but I don't know what's going on with it. Nobody wants to tell me anything. So if you approved this plan, which I have two pages of reasons why you shouldn't even if you don't consider my water issues, I don't have, I don't know how it will hold as Tony, I'm sorry, Chair, Madam Chair said last time, um, if you approve this and these, it contains my, the easement and this wall, is that allowing them to stay as approved changes or are they being eliminated from the drawings so that they can still be addressed by the enforcement order and the notices of violation? Can anybody answer that? Um, I, all I know is that it's this, that's not within our realm. So we can't give you an answer for that, unfortunately. So if you approve this, you're not saying that the wall and the easement are out of the approvement. They're not part of the approvement. There's no way for you to delineate that this is not part of what you're approving. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. This would approve the wall and the um, drainage improvements, all the landscape improvements that were missing from uh, the last build that they were supposed to do. And um, let's see what else. 
And then, the, of course, the house and uh, the new house on Clifton and uh, the tool shed being attached to 1305 Main Street. Well, as let me move on to those items then, because I think with it out with it with my portion not being part of the purview that you can look at, I'm going I'm forced to look at what you can look at and try to convince you that these this shouldn't go through. And I want to point out I am not against teen challenge. I respect their endeavors with drug and alcohol rehabilitation and I respect them as neighbors. It is only this construction that has caused a problem and it's a problem because it's damaging my home. That being said, the things that I have noted since starting in 2021 with this project is that in several tech reviews, it was mentioned that the, um, in one of the tech reviews, it was mentioned that the sewer needed to be removed, moved, the sewer access needed to be moved from under the porch, and it's still under the front porch at 12 Clifton. It was mentioned that the dumpster needed to be moved away from the building 10 feet with a block wall behind it so that it couldn't in accidentally be pushed up against it. It's still right up against the building. There's been comments made that the applicant has built willy-nilly over property lines, and that's evident. There is no delineation for the confinement of what the workspace is, as it's been reported in several different places as different numbers. In the June 2016 application for this project, the property information form signed by both the applicant, Oxford Cruz, and Scott Ferrier stated that the land area square footage is 104,544 square feet. But just two or three pages later on the site plan review fee schedule, they declare it as 500 to 10,000 square feet, which means they only paid $500 for the site plan fee instead of 9,500 for a 104,544 square foot project. That's up to you. I don't know how to, I, I don't know what you guys want to do, whether you want to give the money away or not. But it shows that the scope of this project is almost impossible to determine. And as Mr. Odenuqua had mentioned in his April report and his, his September report to the to the board that without the determination of the scope of the work, there's no way to determine if stormwater, what the stormwater requirements are for this project. And with stormwater being a, a, a big problem in this area and an important thing to take note of, how do you pass something that doesn't get that type of oversight? One the other another thing with regards to the property at Clifton Ave, 12 Clifton, is that the property card says it's a one family in an R2 zone. Oscar Cruz at one of the tech reviews stated it was going to remain a two family when he was questioned. But Scott Ferrier has on every document I've seen that it's going to be a three family. And the plan it's drawn into a C3 zone. So what is allowed? What isn't allowed? What requires a new variance? How many apartments are going to be in there? How many new car, uh, parking spaces are gonna be required? Is there enough green space for the extra tenants in that area? Um, does the 20 foot setback for 12 Clifton include the porch? Is that up to code? Because the 20, the porch is not 20 foot back, but the foundation is. As I understand it, if you're building a house from 60% or more, it's gotta be all 100% within code. So that would require it to be set back. Uh, any of these 
these scenarios. How many bedrooms, how many parking spaces? Does the variance that was issued back in 2017, which stated no more than 36 beds, is that going to uphold when they add more units and people to this property? Because as I see it, they've been in violation of that since day one without green space or parking. And now they're gonna add more people, which is gonna further jeopardize it. Um, let me see what else. Oh, they've got two parking spaces in front of the mechanics shop, which has an operating lift. And I did call um, Deputy Chief Williams today who was kind enough to answer the phone, but I didn't get the answer because he was too, he was trying to figure it out himself, I think. Is that allowed for those two vehicles to be parked in front of that garage and be part of their parking count? Another thing is if the dumpster gets moved, they are going to lose at least one parking space. And um, at the last meeting, you're, you guys were right. You you asked us to get the engineers together and try to come up with a resolution. Uh, unfortunately, the only one and only conversation we were able to elicit from Scott of Homegrown Engineering was unfruitful. He told my engineer on June 2nd, 2023, that we'd have something to look at in a couple of weeks, but we never received anything. And the one contingency that we continued to request was that whatever they propose had a element of regrading and allowing for my water to go. In addition, I don't think, I, I mean, you guys are the planning board. And as much as the planning department is recommending something and as much as the law department it seems to be advising something the bottom line is it comes down to you guys and does it make sense to issue another perm another plan per approve another plan to an applicant who is also the general contractor of the last construction that's in violation and in enforcement order for malicious compliance to have permission to move forward with yet another project before not only taking any responsibility, he refuses responsibility for what he did. He literally stated in a letter after that meeting to the board that the they it didn't mention anything about the chain link fence and he he did not, he never intended to <clears throat> just, he never intended to follow the plan is what he said. And that's in his writing, that's Oscar's letter to you. And he said that after the meeting where Scott acknowledged, but it did in all honesty, the approved plan did say proposed chain link fence for screening purposes, it certainly did. I think we can all remember him saying it because I know I, for one, was surprised he actually said it. But there was no indication that there was block to be put in this area. And the one thing Scott avoided saying is that had it been the chain link fence, the elevation wouldn't have been changed. And the water, the historical migration of water from Testa's property all the way up to Clifton Ave would have continued to cross Teen Challenge's property. Now the proposed swale or French drain that they think is going to work for several reasons won't work. One, they have no regrading of Testa's property to make it receive water. And the elevations that are on the plans don't match what's really out here. There are, are mounds of dirt back here that they've piled up in the efforts to prevent the water from getting to their property through that block wall. I employ you, someone come out here and let me point out these issues to you. 
Also, I have asked numerous times for somebody to come out and verify the green space that they claim they have, because I can point out several places, one behind the mechanics garage, which is entirely paved. You can see it from, from Clifton Ave, to the new walkway, concrete walkway that they put into the building at 1315. It's a two-way ramp that takes up quite a bit of their green space. Uh, the area over by 1279 in the in the parking lot, one of them they have that they're going to reap um, its new proposed green space, but in the driveway section closest to the house, They've got a whole wedge that they have greened out, but it's not green. It's pavement. And that doesn't count the slab behind the building that the generator sits on or the air conditioners over by the... Um, Veronica, if I could just um, um, ask you to take a minute for us. Uh, Rob, do you have a site plan you could pull up? I don't have it. I would ask Evan to pull it up if he's got it. All right. While he's pulling that up, um, yeah, give me a second. If, if this was approved and they start construction, wouldn't each part of this uh, plan be reviewed before additional permits, like while inspections are happening, to monitor this? What is the process for that? Is there any um, information you can provide to for the board and for Veronica? Um, we do know that when they pull a building permit, mm -hmm. um, the foundations will be um, inspected before they uh, continue building. Uh, the footings are inspected, and then the uh, uh, final foundation is inspected by the building department. Um, if there is any question about a lift being in a building, that's not something that, that we know about. Um, it, it, we've heard um from the counselor that they uh are looking for a garage license um but to my knowledge there's not a an existing lift on the property but i i haven't inspected each and every square foot of the property what do you see on the plan and can you point out the green space that she's saying is hard And also um, the 20 foot setback. Is that part of the porch or actually the setback? Okay. Um, he's going in too close, but everything where you see the darker horizontal shading mm -hmm. uh, is where new landscaping is being installed as a result of this approval. Um, the parking is being realigned as a result of this approval. Um, and then it's the house and the tool shed, which is being added to the old garage at um, 1305. Okay. And what, where's the uh, plan? Because she's mentioned that it keeps changing from a, a one or a two family and an R2 or a C3. So whatever's on this plan has to, oh, there it is, R, do I see R2 or C2? It is a C2 district this, where the house is now, um, but it's part of their mission. And so it's, its use is covered by the Dover Amendment. And that's not something that we can tread on lightly. From what I, am, excuse me, am I still talking? Yes, you're still talking. I'm sorry, is, is it my turn? Um. Before you go on, because we have a lot of information to process, Veronica, Marty, did you have a question? I saw your hand up. No. Okay. Um, go ahead, Veronica. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, the area that I was referring to in green space is where one of those cars are at the 1790, 7, 1279 address and behind the garage at 12 Clifton. The, the whole space between the garage which is the mechanics garage and it has the lift um i have a picture of it from main street with the car up on the lift but the uh green space that they have indicated is 
that entire piece where it bends out to the left and down and then goes up. It'll go straight across. That's just one of them. There's also the air conditioning systems that are sitting on concrete in the front in that T section of green space. And I'd be glad to send you a picture of my own drawing because I did an extensive oversight with Google Earth to make sure I knew exactly what I was talking about. And I, I am aware that the green space that's in, or the gray spaces that you're seeing are going to be green space, but you can see how much green space is in the C2 section regarding compared to the R2, and it's supposed to be 25% in the R2, 10% in the commercial space. And I look at a lot of concrete, a lot of pavement. So are they exempt from that, Rob, because of the Dover? I think what we're faced with at this situation is those are existing. Now they're existing and the parking is already done and there's um, really not a way for us to force the removal of that. We've been, uh, we had a meeting with the, uh, oh, I, I'll stop there. Okay. Madam Chair, could I ask a question, please? Sure. I'm I'm just confused. I thought the last time this came before us, um, Veronica, you were concerned about the water runoff. It seems to me that this whole um, problem has gotten a lot bigger than than water runoff. Uh, am I reading that right? For me, I appreciate it. Um, the question for me, if you wanted my focus point, they have created a basin out of my property with the easement and the wall and three engineers now city engineer coesed engineer and my latest engineer who is the structural engineer have all said until i can find a way to legally disperse my water i am in a creek literally because the fact is if my sump pump isn't running, there is no runoff. So the water is just flooding under my basement and around my foundation. I am getting water up between the slab floor and the foundation walls for the first time in 30 years that I've lived here. I, Mark, have, I, never... I, have, I have to say to you that I personally, I feel terrible, terrible for you about all this. But my dilemma is I just don't know who's at fault here and who's and legally who's can do something about it. Well, it's, it's been made clear it's it'll be a, a civil issue and and we are faced with the decision just to review and and we're not we're not the ones deeming that the easement is going to be appropriate. The improvements revised submission is appropriate for the drainage. Um, that would be that has to be recorded by not only the department, but it's going to be approved by legal. So um, that's what we're faced with. So we, we've we heard you, Veronica, we understand, and I hope that um, you find some um, comfort in knowing that this is going to go in front of the legal department before anything is approved. I do, and I... I'm not saying that they're not going to try and work it out. I, what I want to make sure, though, is that the board is, and I do mean this sincerely, the board is not feeling compelled to overlook the fact that the applicant, who is also the general contractor, is currently under an NOV with an enforcement order. It, I don't believe that should be overlooked by the board when making their decision. And the, and all of these changes that have been requested by the different departments that have been ignored, it seems to me like there's a... Uh... Madam Chair, may I? May I? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Do we have any anything from the building department on uh, violations of the previous project? 
Evan, do we have a copy of the uh, notice of violation and the enforcement order in the file? Uh, there, sh there should be, yes. I, I know there was, um, I don't know the details of it, but I know there was another one filed just a few months ago. And from my understanding, again, it's been the building department working with the law department uh, and the applicant to resolve those. And, and, I guess I my, find. and I guess my second question is, uh, why isn't there a representative for the builder today? I just wondering. Does anyone know? Well, I can answer that because they requested a postponement again, but the board chose to hear it. Okay. But they are aware uh, that this might have been heard. Yeah, right. we had we had the the right to vote on whether we wanted to hear it and make a decision, grant a postponement. Hmm. Um, Madam Chair, uh, yes. we have another speaker who would like to um, talk, and that is uh, Councillor Susan Nicastro. So I am opening her microphone now, and Councillor, you should be able to speak now. You don't want to see me? Oh, well, you can put your camera on, too. Sure. Um, it doesn't give me the option to put a camera on. Oh, OK. Hang on. I, I you must have taken that away. Should I take no, this I'll, personally? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll move you up to uh, panelist. There you go. Oops, she disappeared. I stopped sharing, but if anyone wants to see the plan again, just let me know and I'll throw it back up. Okay. Council, so, oh, there she is. So this has been around forever and surely you're all tired of it and you'd like to perhaps act on it and get rid of it, okay? But, and, and I'm, as I speak, I'm gonna set aside all of the issues that poor Veronica is experiencing. I'm just looking at the site plan review application and the plans, okay? And you know, I've, I've, I've done what you're doing. I've sat in your seats for five years, so I'm a bit familiar with it. But like, I, I don't know how you can approve this tonight. And these are my suggestions for you to consider. You're being asked to improve the, to approve these entire plans. Well, that's a sneaky thing that some developers do. Are, are you sure that you're only approving the two things that are in the circles? They've given you an entire plan. You got to be careful that there aren't some things going on here that you're not prepared to you haven't reviewed and you're not prepared to approve. Okay? I'm I'm looking at you know, you see two little circles. Now, despite what the plan says, the property on Clifton Avenue is residential. It's an R2. Okay? The little circle that's part of 1350 uh, Main Street, that is C2. Okay? So you're working on two different things here. If you make these plans larger, you, you've already heard um, Veronica say, you don't know whether it's a one family, which is what the assessor's data says, a two family, uh, somebody said a three family, you don't know what you're, you're dealing with. But at the same time, do you really think you're gonna get enough parking in that little driveway if, if this is deemed a three family? And of course you're gonna let them decide because where there's ambiguity, they're gonna go for it and why wouldn't they? So that's an issue, that's a real concern. Clifton Avenue is a really busy street. And if you don't give adequate parking, well, they'll probably use the parking behind because you can see it's a free for all back there. There's, I count seven or eight different parcels that Teen Challenge is owning there. They're still delineated, they still get seven or eight tax bills, but yet all of the parking is merged. Well, where's your parking? What's happening? It's, is it a three family? Are they gonna have adequate parking? Does anyone know? Um, they're putting an addition on a garage. Does that impact everything else? Does it impact your, your green space? It, can you really tell what's green space from these, these plans? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, if I were you guys just taking this at face value, I would have a lot of questions that might overcome my desire to put this to rest, being that it's been hanging around for so for so long. So those are the things that I immediately see. Um, you know, 
can can you really act on this tonight as much as you might like to? I, I don't. I don't see it. Honestly, it's not a matter of wanting just to act to it and put it, act on it and put it to bed. Um, I recall hearing this over and over again, and we were focused on the drainage. Um, I don't recall all these other issues coming up other than the wall versus a chain link fence, and that had to do with the stormwater and the the driveway asphalt being raised. Um, and it was all about the stormwater, so, which is you know what Marty had referenced. And now these other issues are coming to light. These weren't brought up before. Well, we'll look at your application. Um, you know, it's kind of confusing and unclear what is going on here and what they want approved. I asked when we pulled up the site plan, what is on the site plan? Um, so I don't recall now for, is it, what are they proposing on there for, um, it's just 36 beds. Oh yeah, and they're adding more beds too. I, I presume they're not in the garage. 36 beds is what they're proposing for this addition. Is that accurate, Rob? And that can't in be the new, if it's on there. In the new structure, yes. You think they're gonna put 36 beds in that little house? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Chairman. No, uh, th does the plan allow for it? Well, the interior of the building is, and how they stack people in there, um, it unfortunately isn't in the planning board's purview. Um, we obviously- Well, normally um, we do see, sorry, Rob, but normally we do see if it's apartments, we see the apartment space, in, or if it's a three family, we see the bedroom space on plans. Well, this is think dormitory space for people in recovery. Rob, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I've confused you, and I didn't mean to. The 36 beds are the variants for the multi-purpose building. I don't mean that to include oh, in the 12 Clifton. The 12 Clifton that is listed as a three-family. I don't know whether it's one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedrooms, but I, I have no idea what's inside because they were asked for architectural drawings to provide them and they haven't. Another issue is that if they don't want you to know what they're going to do, they don't provide the drawings. What is on the plan that a one or two or three family, it has to be stated there. It, yeah. It's stated, it's in his application and narrative that it is a, it is a three family, uh, three unit building. Okay, three units. So that's on the plan that can't change, correct? Correct. And parking, because it came up now as a question, I thought I again didn't know this was an issue, but is but then they need zoning relief because zoning says it's a single. M Madam Chairman, if Madam Chairwoman, if I could, if this is a zoning issue, why is it before the planning board? These 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 things never came up before. It's the her first we've heard of them, and I just don't understand why that's happening, and why why um, the engineering firm isn't here, who can speak to the plan. Well, for these new new issues that are surfacing, right. because these weren't. Well, uh, to be fair, these aren't new issues. They're they're issues that the board has heard before. It's just been so long ago. Um, the oh, new the green wrong. space the green space requirement um, has been calculated and is on the plan. The parking requirement has been calculated and we've counted each and every one of those spaces um, okay. and and know exactly where they are um, according to the the permits that they had in the past. This is an existing structure that's being replaced. Um, I don't know how many units are in there now, but it's, uh, it, if it needs to go to zoning to become a three unit, then that is a zoning issue and not a planning board issue. But I understand where the counselor is coming from. And that's something that we need to make sure that the building department and the building commissioner knows that. It's an, what is your recommendation that we do here? 
I feel like we're swimming upstream. It, it's the planning department's um, opinion, as stated in our staff report, that we approve this plan. Based on the guidance that we've received from the city solicitor's office, there's nothing that the planning board can do about future or about this, the groundwater issues that are flooding, um, uh, allegedly flooding the uh, uh, Veronica Stevens's house at Green Place. But what I'd like to comment on is that when we came before the board in May, it's absolutely true that the focus was on the violations that were outstanding because we were told in the tech review that the rest of the plan would not be addressed until this the violations were corrected. Rob, you told me yourself they wouldn't be able to move forward without dealing with this issue first. And so the focus has been on getting compliance to the 2017 plan. It was only that we were told you, you guys were going forward with this plan. They were going to be able to present just the 2000, I mean, the Clifton 12 and the two story tool shed that they're building onto the back of the work, carpenter shop, which I also haven't even addressed. I don't, you know, it's like there is, there is so much that was requested from them in tech that they have not provided that it's, everybody keeps saying, you know, this has never happened before. That's my life. But we this, ha this whole plan has not been truly vetted because it got caught up in the water. It got caught up in the, in the NOV. It got caught up in, in, in Teen Challenge's denial of what was going on. I thought you. You that it was going to be a security gate. There's no gate. You know, he said that, that to the zoning committee and nothing happens. And I, I know it's not the engineer that put the wall, the, the wall here, but it was your applicant. And your applicant is for all intents purposes, he's a violator that is not respecting the planning system. And I don't see how the city can authorize the city, the planning board can vote on giving somebody who's in violation permission to do anything else. It doesn't, it doesn't bode well for the city. And it certainly does. I mean, even sitting here listening to Mr. May say, well, we've been advised by the legal department to let it go through. What kind of whitewash is that? Well, I don't think it means just let it go through what he's what the legal department has advised because I had this sent to legal several times because I wasn't sure what to do in this situation. Um, and it's come back to us that this is a building department issue, not planning board issue or decision. If we pass this site plan review, it's just on the easement being properly revised. Now it would be the building department that would reinforce the notice of violation and any issues, not the planning board. Does, does, do you understand that, Veronica? We're not okay. approving the building, we're approving the site plan as it's presented, but the building department would deal with the violations and issues. And I do wanna address that, yes, I did say that um, Teen Challenge had to fix the violations, which are the, uh, the parking situation, the green space, uh, the things that were built that were not on the plan. And we had hoped that we would be able to force their hand on other violations, but the uh, city solicitor says, oops, that that was not in our jurisdiction or the planning board's jurisdiction. So this plan shows in the improved landscape that was missing from the previous plan or the implementation of the previous plan and the improved parking that was not shown on the, uh, that was not implemented from the previous plan. The one thing it doesn't is, uh, uh, directly deal with is, is the groundwater issue that is seeping into um, uh, the Green Place um, property. And what's not, you know, it has, it's still a zoning issue 
um, as well. So that has to be addressed. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it just seems like, you know, uh, I have to be honest, when we approved hearing this case, I didn't quite realize it was because we didn't have any representative to to talk to. Um, some of these points are extremely valid. It would be nice to hear from someone who um, may be in violation that maybe they're working on this, maybe they're not. We don't know. Um, I, I just, I, I, what are, what are our options uh, in in terms of? I mean, do we kick do we kick this farther down? Do we postpone it? I mean, what are the options there? Because right now, without um, you know, we're we're between a wall and somebody that's that has issues. You can either vote it up or vote it down or postpone it. We strongly suggest that you either vote it up or vote it down. It can't postpone it any longer. It's just. I, I think at this point it's it's to the point where it's where it's, all right a year or so you would think it would be in, important enough to show up so I mean that says it all to me I don't know how everyone else feels I agree with that okay thank um, you any the other board, it's, the board sounds like they're we're still in the public testimony phase. Of, of this um, uh, public hearing. And so if the board chooses to deliberate, we need to close the public comment section and move on to that. But we okay. want to we want to see if there are any closing arguments from uh, Veronica Stevens or from uh, Councillor Nick Castro. Any other from for public or um, Veronica? I'm sorry. Am I still live? Yes, yeah. you are. Oh, okay. Um, but please, um, we don't want to hear anything that you've already said. Exactly what I'm trying to think. You know, I, I, I'm relying on common sense here. There's, if you can't answer the questions, what are you approving? So, you know, that's what your charge is. Can you, if you have questions, I know I've been asking the questions for a couple years now, um, but if you can't get the answers, then what are you, what are you voting on? I mean, I well, I I, I want to again. I heard the questions, but they were Rob reminded us that they were all addressed: the green space, the parking. Um, no, I'm sorry, it, Tony. What I'm referring to is the the problems with the actual build the fact that they never supplied anybody with an architectural drawing uh, they they could pill, put up a taj mahal and if it's a three family it's gonna it's gonna go okay. you know that you can't give them you can't give teen challenge that much rope they will hang somebody with it okay all right thank you veronica susan thank you i just wanted to say Look, what, look at what's in front of you. You know, this is site plan review. Look at that big site plan. They're treating their seven or eight parcels as a, as a site, okay? Are you prepared to approve that whole site plan when really what's, what, what they're talking about in their application are the little circled areas, okay? You know, you can't really get a gauge on this house on Clifton Avenue that they want to rebuild from that huge site plan. Like, is that really adequate? I, I just throw that out to you because I wouldn't think so. Okay. okay. And don't you need more detail on that garage they want to make bigger? I mean, come on. And, and you know, all of this notwithstanding the other issues with the site plan that, that aren't being addressed. I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. Um, and I have a question, Rob. The notice of violation, is that from the... the the 2017 work that they did? Uh, I believe it is, ma'am. Okay, all right. When That's the new headquarters building was built. But not pertaining to this wall on this property? Well, that wall and the property are part of that headquarters building. Okay, all right. Good to know, thank you. All right, um, anyone else from public or can we close that portion? 
Uh, if anybody else would like to testify or, or give witness on this matter, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. And, and we will unlock your microphone and you'll be able to speak to the board. And I do not see anyone using the icon. And so I would think you will be clear. Okay. Uh, board members, any other comments or questions? Okay, is there a motion? A motion to approve. Second. Okay, so if... So motion to approve. The... Yeah, with final, well, we have to, with final oh. approval is contingent on the easement of 30 Clifton Ave being properly revised, reviews reviewed by the city staff and recorded. And... Um, the return to, is it returned to ZBA or just heard in front of the zone, going to zoning? What is this? The zoning issues. Do we have to make mention of that or should we? Um, Madam we Chair, we will inform, as they pull a building permit, they need to specify what their, you know, how many units are going to be building there. And um, if, we will notify and put in, in the uh, citizen serve file to make sure that um, if they need to get zoning relief, that they should do it at that time. Ma'am Keelan, could I ask a question? Rob, Rob, what is exactly in the purview of the planning board here? Make it really clear to me, I'm a little bit slow. And I was not around for 2017 and 18 and 19. You're talking five years here. It's been going on. Yes, it has been going along quite a while. So, um, so what, what exactly what, what, what exactly in, are we voting on? What in front of the board what is in front of the board is their application to rebuild the residential structure on Clifton Ave, which is um in between Main Street and the big auditorium building. Which is already uh, they, there. Which is already there. Uh, they want to add an addition to uh, uh, the back of a garage, which uh, they are calling a, a two-story tool shed. Um, and then the improvements to the green space and to the parking spaces that are shown on the plan in the darkened um, hash marks. All right, so if we vote to approve this, these these concerns by Veronica oh. will be addressed or not? Excuse me, excuse me, sorry, I also forgot, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, they are proposing to build a drainage swale um, at 30 Clifton. Evan, could you correct me? I believe that's it, yeah, it's the next door it's, one, it's, just no, I think it's, it's the 30, area at uh, the top of the yes, 30 wall Clifton. to make sure that water doesn't come off of the, that hill, which um, could cause problems. And so the swale will then bring the water back to um, Teen Challenges property and will go into their um, uh, storm recharge system. So the uh, Marty, from what I'm understanding, the parking and green space has has been addressed is on the plan, and they have to stick to this plan. I understand that they're showing all the different lots, as um, Councillor Susan mentioned, but it we're sticking to just that address and that lot, that addition to that property, not the rest, even though it's on the plan. Um, it has to be addressed by zoning because it's a three family. So that'll be taken care of there. Rob, what about the architectural drawing that wasn't provided? Is that supposed to be? It does not need to be provided. Not a requirement. Um, generally, generally people give those to us just for the heck of it. But we are looking at the physical footprint of the building where the storm water is going to be stored and how it um, any uh, uh, green space requirements or parking requirements that are needed 
are satisfied. Like the rest of the board, I wanna feel good about our decision here. So I'm just gonna make it very clear again, if we have to reiterate the conditions that might already be approved, but the parking has to be meet the criteria, the green space it has to go in front of zoning because of the three family. They have to stick uh, to that. Yes. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, in addition to um, Larry's condition uh, that the easement be reviewed by the law department and approved, that we should also uh, think about conditioning the approval on the confirming of the number of, of residential units that are going to be in the Clifton Half, correct, Clifton Avenue House. And um, if they, if it's more than a single family unit right now, or if it's not a single family unit right now, they need to go for get zoning relief. Well, I thought it's written as a three family. I had asked that question, so we were clear the, on that. The, the plan shows it as a three family. We do not know for sure if it's a currently a one, two, or three family house. Okay, so. So, um, so can Matt, I just I, clarify, the, the plan is they're going to be raising the building that's there now and building a brand new structure. So Madam Chair, right. just, just a clarifying question. Are we saying they can, they're going to go in front of the zoning board regardless or only if there's going to be these, if, if it's um, changing into a three family? If, if there's zoning issues with it changing into a three family, if it's not ex currently a three family, has to be established what it is, and if it's being increased, it has to go in front of zoning. So that be a condition. And and Evan, you said they are raising the bit the structure and building. I thought they were doing an addition to what's there. Uh, it's both, Madam Chair. From my understanding, the house, the dwelling, is going to be raised, and they're going to construct a new building. The garage, they're building in addition to the existing structure. The or the sh the shed rather. There was two circles. The one in the north is being replaced with a new structure. The southern. Here, I'll pull up the plan again. Yeah, any one second. Oh, that's new news again. This right here, per just per their application. This is the dwelling we were talking about. We were wondering if it was going to be. It's going to be a three family. From my understanding, is they are going to be raising the current structure and constructing. A three family or a three unit, whatever they whatever they called it. And then down here below it, this piece is going to be an addition. Uh the shed will be an addition to this here, which is existing right now. So hopefully that answered the question. Hmm. And I just looked up the property card um for the Clifton Avenue home. It does show it as a one unit building right now. Um, so they would need zoning relief if they were going to build a two or more units there, because I believe the property is. Oh, okay. if their map is wrong, then the property is an R3, R2. Okay, so and they would be able to do three units by right. In an R2 zone, they can build three. Yeah. Yes. So they would not have to go to zoning. Madam Chair, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Thanks for the clarification. Um, and, and if it is correctly Z, C2, um, then the Dover Amendment trumps our, uh, trumps the use. And so they would, because it's part of their mission, then using that as part of their mission as a residential facility changes the use automatically. Okay. Does it trump uh, parking requirements and parking requirements? Does it trump that? Um, it, it can, but in this case, because they are not actual apartments that they're, they're residential uh, units for their mission, and these are young men in bunk beds without vehicles. Um, for the most part, uh, it, we we've calculated that parking 
should not be a problem there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I've I've gotten answers to my questions. I know we closed uh, that portion, but board members, do you have any other questions? We should still include the the piece, though it has to go in front of zoning if if it's in a C two. Isn't that their response? Sorry, Madam Chair. Isn't that their responsibility to do that? Or Rob, I guess, that? Rob, this I guess the, the, the belt and suspenders. Okay, thanks. We just want to double be doubly sure. All right, and again, the notice of violations, that's for the building department to deal with if they're gonna give permits to this contractor to build. That's not what we authorize. So what, what, you'll, be a, what you'll be voting on right now is to accept or reject the site plan that has been presented that shows the increase in green space, it shows the reorganization of the parking, it shows the demolition and the rebuild of the 12 Clifton Avenue home. And it shows the two-story addition tool shed to the 1205 Main Street property. And it shows a, um, a drainage swale at 30 Clifton Avenue. Yes, I have. The conditions that oh. have been discussed are that um, the city solicitor's office should uh, approve and sign off on the uh, the easement language that will allow the installation of drainage at 30 Clifton Avenue. And um, the other uh, uh, condition that should be considered is that if the property needs zoning relief, it has to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. I was just asking that because if I was uh, Veronica, the neighbor here, as far as I'm asking Rob, because the notice of violations or the permits are issued by the building department, correct? So if I was the neighbor, that's who I would, they're the ones that's who. Correct. Okay. And same thing with Councilor Nicastro. Um, all right. Thank you. Okay. Start this over. Is there a motion? I think, uh, Madam Chair, I believe there's still a motion on the floor, or is it? Or yes, is that... I just want to re go through it again because we interrupted the motion, and I, uh, I want it to be clear and clearly stated with the initial motion, the condition. Okay, so you currently have an open motion right now to approve uh, with the easement condition already stated. So if you want to add any further conditions, now is the time, and then you can vote on it. It'll go through uh, necessary, any zoning process, et cetera, building permits. Just want that on the record as a condition. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right, roll call. James? No. Roll Yolando. Uh, <laughs> yes. Larry. Yes. Marty. Yes. Tony. Yes. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Can we just um re-say the motion just for the record? Just for the record. Re-say. I think and we said it before. Restate what? Sorry, Isaiah. Re restate the motion. What 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 the motion was. Just for the record. The motion was to pass from James with the condition on the easement. Larry second the motion. James voted against passing this. Yolanda voted to approve. Larry voted to approve. Marty voted to approve. Correct me if I'm wrong, board members, and I voted to approve. Okay. All right, thank you. 
Uh, next, we have the reorganization. We have to reelect the chair, the vice chair, traffic, and um, the zoning board, ZBA representative. Okay. Um, for the vice chair, it's basically someone to cover in case the chair is absent. I think, Larry, did you hold that position before? Okay. Yes, I did. And then understanding Larry is um, is leaving us last meeting in May. He wouldn't be a candidate for that. All right, um, let's start with the chair. I nominate Tony, Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I second that. All right, roll call, James. Yes. Yolando? Yes. Larry? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tony, yes. Thank you all. I accept. Okay. And Burnett. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Orlando for the vice chair. Okay. All right. I second that. Roll call, James? Yes. Orlando? Yes. Larry? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tony? Yes. Congratulations, Jolando. Do you accept? Thank you. Yes, I do. All right. I'd like to nominate James for the traffic. Second. Okay. Roll call, James. Uh, yes. Jolando. Yes. Larry. Yes. Marty. Yes. Tony. Yes. All right. Congratulations, James. And then uh, I nominate James again for ZBA. Second. Okay. Roll call, James. Yes. Rolando? Yes. Larry? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, Rolando. Thank you. All right. So, Any other business before we adjourn? Just okay. uh, everyone got the sign-in sheet. Has everyone signed it already? No, if I didn't. If not, please yeah. do it as soon as you can. That would help us out. Yeah, right. That's it. Okay. Could do it. Uh, we close. Did, did you send it already? Because I didn't see it. Did anyone else see it? Yeah, I saw it. I was just, oh, okay. Unless it just come it. through. I'll do it to hang up. Try, try to check this beam. You know, sometimes it gets kind of. Yeah. Long. And known. All right. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. James. Yes. Wando. Yes. Larry. Yes. Marty. Yes. Tony, yes. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night Thank you.